So I'm here with my friend Dean. I have just gotten a battery, a SIG Energy uh, 24 kilowatt hour battery. It is amazing. And for the first time ever, I have gone with a retailer where it's wholesale prices, so Amber, uh, which has literally only been a very short amount of time, but you've been with them for a very long time. Can you just show um, people what your credit is? This is not your bill. This is your credit. This is my credit. And hopefully you can see that there. Let's, Let's make it as big as oh, it needs to be. That's not <laughs> annoying at all. Um, $2,292.73. That's how much Amber, sorry Amber, yes, how much you owe me. I expect it in five cent pieces, please. Um, Are you yeah. ever going to use that? So I've already, I've, already had, I've already cashed out once. I've already had... Oh, you can cash it out? Yes, you can. I didn't know that. You can cash it out. I've already had them pay me $2,000 in the past. So before. that's not just yeah. what you've earned. So how long have no. you been with them? Uh, I'm not counting, I'm probably about two years now, I think it is. Okay. Yeah. So um, the wholesale market, I mean, I certainly wouldn't recommend going on it without a battery. Would you agree with that? No, uh, but I think times are changing and I think it's possible that people could start to think about going on it if you don't have solar, but could get a battery, which is an interesting thought. I've heard that. Mm. It does make sense because, I mean, we don't generate, we've only got a 4.7 kilowatt array, so we're not generating a heat, but certainly I've bought energy at well today it was 10 cents so if we show you the app here this is kind of what it looks like it's very very simple to use and if i swipe across that is what i would get if i was feeding and what you, you would paid. get right now mm. you get paid seven cents so right now yes 19 cents is what you'd be paying per kilowatt right. hour and mm. then on the bottom here it's actually really cool you've got the um a prediction of what the prices will be uh, over the evening and over the next 12 hours. So at 7 o'clock, you'd be paying 43 cents, and then in the evening, it would be 25. But during the middle of the day, you're paying, yeah, anywhere between, oh, I was paying 10, 11 cents. So it's well, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's even very occasionally, it hits negative. So what happens when it goes negative? Can you explain to people what that means? Because I wasn't really sure until I delved into that so we're not going to get in the economics and tech or anything like that it's really don't. simple look if there's a lot of something and we have abundance then something is cheap right and in the middle of the day or does that mean there's too much of it we have so much energy sitting in the grid that the market pushes the price into a point where they sort of don't want anyone to put any more out there so you'll actually be you'll have to pay to put solar into the you grid you would have to pay to put solar into the grid so most people don't feel that impact. Mm. Their retailer has to potentially, depending on the way that they're interacting with the market, they may potentially have to pay for your energy to go onto the grid. So they're kind of hedging that and they add that to your overall... That's right, which is why solar prices for your feed-in tariff now is actually getting quite low because mm. they're probably having to pay twice. They pay you for your solar, oh, plus they yeah. have to then pay... If the market negative. for you putting the power in. So Ooh. it's like they get get hit twice. Now, it's potentially a bit more complicated than that uh, from the perspective of some of the large organisations and how they would interact with the market and the generation. Mm. Uh, but look, to, to keep it very simple, in the middle of the day, one of the big problems is that some big generators, like coal generators, anything that generates lots of power and has a lot of inertia, in other words, they can't slow it down quickly, so mm -hmm. that would be... In particular, coal mm -hmm. or nuclear, mm -hmm. it takes a while to spin these massive turbines mm -hmm. up and spin them down again. And they've got to think of very innovative ways to deal with that when they're trying to pull back from putting too much energy in. All of this solar coming in. All this solar comes in. And, and because it's effectively free, people don't have to turn it off. Yes. It doesn't cost anything to turn and it. You can turn it on and off very, very quickly, right? Yeah. So. There's a negative incentive. So look, we're getting back to it. If it's very cheap in the middle of the day, then it stands to reason that if you don't have solar, you can potentially now benefit. If anything, you should nearly be calling your power company if you don't have solar and say, hey, I've heard that power is very cheap in the middle of the day. How about you give me a better deal? Wow. Would Sorry to anyone out there that might be Would offended and might make money that way, but... Yeah. Would a regular retailer, so obviously not a wholesale person, wouldn't a regular retailer do that? I think some regular retailers are already starting to provide attractive prices in the middle of the day. Because why don't we have off-peak in the middle of the day that's like really, like in 11 till 2, mm. dirt cheap? You would encourage behaviour to change, right? Because a lot of that energy in the middle of the day where the duck curve is, you know, crazy, 
Mm. It's been curtailed, right? It's been mm. wasted. You should explain the duck curve because it's quite Go on, interesting. explain the duck curve. Oh, you want me? I can no, you please, you do So it. typically, <laughs> the, if you look at how much, how people use electricity or how Australia uses electricity, it, on average, throughout the 24-hour cycle, most power is actually used in the middle of the day when people are awake and they're at work and they're going out to lunch and things like that. And so we have this natural sort of a bell curve in the middle of the day. Now, what we have seen is that because there's so much solar energy in the middle of the day and there's so much renewable energy in the middle of the day, it pushes the middle of the day supply requirements down. And so you get this little, go the other way around, divot in the middle. Right. But the challenge is... Which is the shape of a duck. <laughs> well, no, it's getting there. It's not quite the shape of a duck. The shape of the duck happens okay. because when everyone gets home, they turn on their air conditioners, they turn on their heaters, they turn on their stove. Mm-hmm. And so it pushes a bit of demand up just as the sun and the energy... Just, just sort of the duck's down. bum end of the duck, So, right? yeah, it's, well, it's, actually the, 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 it's actually the top of the head. Is it? Yeah, it's the top of the head. So, um, yeah. I've got my duck curve backwards. You know, back to front. Okay. Yeah. That does not surprise me. Yeah, see, the tail is at the start of the day because everyone gets up. People don't use quite as much in the morning. And then, uh, yeah, so it, it creates, it goes from a bell to a duck shape. And right. that's what I call it, a duck curve. A duck curve. And so what we want to do is say, how about we shift some of that great free electricity that's mm. very clean in the middle of the day yeah. and put it at that time whenever that all we need is a couple of hours which people in, who are using the wholesale market are absolutely doing that because yep. you see that you are incentivized to do it because mm. the price is so cheap in the middle of the day so whether you're filling a battery or turning on everything in your house because the solar is going which is if you don't have a battery that's what you would do anyway because that's your right. solar is acting as a cheap energy or free energy and you don't even need a battery that lasts 24 hours all you need is a battery to last long enough to get you through that the peak that that peak the morning peak and the evening peak people say oh but the battery you know it it doesn't last 24 hours the sun doesn't shine at night type of thing i need one that lasts 24 hours no you don't you just need something to hit that expensive time that'll save you money interesting and that'll save you know saves the grid uh saves production Mm. and uh you benefit does that mean we don't have to build out potentially as much stuff as we think we do because we can soak it up at other times and just take advantage of the fact that we've got all that energy it's one point we've just got to store it that, well it's not yeah it's not even about how much renewable it's it's if you forget about renewable energy and just think about generation capacity right there's typically what you would do is create enough generation capacity for that one time when most energy is required right right yeah. you only need you know and, and, and some outliers so it's like we just need to make sure that that time the lights stay on. Yeah. And so it's not about long durations of times. It's just about getting through those short durations of time so you can get to the other side and then top up again. So interestingly, um, in that first week of, of having my battery, um, I saw, um, I experienced my first price spike, which I had obviously never seen because I was mm. on a standard regular tariff with my previous energy retailer. And so prices were like $20 a kilowatt hour. This was like last week. And so I sold energy into the grid Mm. at that time and made $69. And now that's sitting in credit on my account. So so during that time, is that gas peaker plants taking over or is that a coal generator failing? Is that kind of when those spikes happen? That conceivably, yes. So that is like most markets, if someone sees an opportunity to make money, yeah. then you, you could potentially do that. And, that's, mm. the, and, and to be fair, the market had been set up in a way to incentivize organizations to build capacity to fill the gaps to get through those points. And then charge through the nose for it. And then charge through the nose for it. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. the, one could sort of argue that uh, you could see that as an opportunity to make money as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'll let you connect the dots. What I feel, though, because I'm on a VPP now with Amber, is I feel good going, I'm supporting the grid That's at right. that time. As an individual, taking potentially money away from particular greedy companies who are trying to do that. Well, well the work can often uh, happen. Which are probably fossil fuel com- you know, based, I would assume. Yeah, well, uh, anyone who's got the ability to push that power in really quickly, right? Mm. But yes, it, it typically it, it may be someone who has built that capacity there. Mm. The 
the interesting thing is uh, you, see, you can so- sometimes see situations where you could see a forecast that it's going to be expensive, mm. but then the, the VPPs jump in and push the price back down. Mm, I noticed that because, too, yeah. Because uh, us as virtual Everyone power... Everyone excited. And well, well, yeah, we're, we're not setting the prices. We're just following the price. Yes. And so if you... I'd like, to, you know, I'd like to be able to say, oh, I only sell it at this particular price, yeah. but I don't have that ability. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because I was uh, on a panel with Claire Rainbow at Everything Electric, and she said that only 11% of people who have a battery, only 11% are on VPPs, VPPs which yeah. is a virtual power, power plant where you essentially hand over control to mm. um, the retailer. But I quite like with Amber, you've got those two different versions um, where I can do a much more, hey, I don't want to have these extremes in my battery being used. I'm just going to be a bit more conservative about, about it. Or you can go on the more extreme version where it's like, I'm going to make so, money. Exactly. So I, I yeah. really like that as well. That, and, and, you know, I can leave that VPP and still stay with Amber if I want to. But I, I like that. So it's all very new. Um, I'll let you know how I kind of go with it. Yeah, but I think yes. we're all learning with that one. Yeah. It's, it's lots of fun. It, it sort of gets you a little bit geeky and you're following the numbers all the time. And, and honestly, if I can use it, anyone can use it. That's the truth. You're a geek. I'm not. And if I can figure it out, Anyone can figure it out. So, yeah, maybe maybe this is the year of the battery. I think it is. I think it'd be silly not to uh, at least consider it. Do, the, do the math. You've heard you don't like the, the math. Not the math. Why is it maths, not maths? It used to be maths. Do the math, maths. That's so American. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> um, thanks, Dean. <laughs> thanks, Sarah. All right. All right.